Hey guys, welcome back to Total Tactics FPL. It's Fran here and I'm back with a Game Week 3 video. As you can see, I was at a Game Week rank of 8.4 million before the Liverpool game. My live rank hasn't actually updated correctly. It was previously 860,000. I had dropped all the way from 100k to 860k. That's super normal in these sort of early Game Weeks where there's a lot of variance and a lot of volatility because people have vastly different teams. And a lot of points, I would say, are worth more at this stage in terms of how fast your rank can move and change. At the end of it, I was actually probably ranked around 400k. I'm estimating to end this game week at 396k, something like that. Uh, because of the Salah captaincy going well, it really was very fortunate though to actually get the Salah points. So I'm I'm very, very thankful that he got points whatsoever because United did, definitely did play Liverpool outside of Old Trafford and they played incredibly. Something that we definitely didn't expect based on the initial two performances from United. I thought they looked extremely composed today, fought for a lot of loose balls and contained Liverpool very very well Liverpool in the first half didn't have any key opportunities whereas United did slice them apart several times assets like Sancho, Martial, Rashford all looked very good even Alanga to be quite honest and, and Bruno as far as game week three though when I'm just looking at the teams players that I didn't expect to do so poorly did James probably the key example in a, in a match first Leeds a little bit understandable I think Leeds are a team that are very very strong do press very very well and Chelsea were caught off after the first 20 minutes and I think it just snowballed as far as City we know how great and back and forth the game was obviously a very bad game on paper for the defense something that I didn't necessarily expect say Maximin played Walker out of the park and in general just the City defense I think they couldn't match up to what Newcastle had to offer and a great set piece from Trippier that's super interesting and the Diaz substitution at 21 minutes where Ake had a, a little bit of an injury niggle was an interesting one. I think my initial immediate thoughts on, on Diaz getting bench was that he was going to be my first transfer out this week. But because Ake got injured, I do feel like Diaz is back on in terms of getting nailed minutes for the team. And I'm a little bit worried now about maybe what the impact is on Walker, especially since we have to look at the City midweek fixture. They have a friendly fixture at Barcelona. So that's going to be something to look at to see whether I want to go out of Triple City, out of Diaz at least. I definitely think Cancelo and Haaland are going to stay. Pep also did, however, mention that Haaland is someone that will be rotated for Julian Alvarez when the midweek fixtures start to commence. And those come very, very shortly. So if you look at Haaland's fixtures, well, what we're looking at here after the Crystal Palace game is an immediate fixture in the midweek versus Nottingham Forest. And that's at home, and that's an opportunity for Julian Alvarez to start over Haaland. So we might actually even have to think about exit paths away from Haaland already. And that's already making me think about holding my transfer potentially for another two free transfers at game week five because what if i need to go out of ha holland a little bit earlier into someone like kane or if i don't like holland and i want to move into someone like kdb who i feel like is going to be a bit more nailed that's something i have to think about in the future as well as far as players like luis diaz i think this was another blank for him so a little bit concerning the next game is bournemouth though so there's really no reason to move away from my liverpool assets but it does kind of suggests to me that there, there is an opportunity here to maybe think about holding a transfer at least maybe taking a future hit to go out of Luis Diaz and Haaland and potentially the way I do that is by going into something like KDB and Tony in the future because the 8.0 mids aren't looking very good players like Mount and Saka haven't delivered Madison even though he's still exceptional has tough fixtures and then Foden and Gunnigan probably still have to share minutes alongside potential random benchings and other form and fixtures that could affect the way they perform Bernardo and Zaha are obviously there at the 7.0 price bracket as well. If I wanted to think about even going into a structure like a 5-4-1 potentially. As you can see though, I have Nico Williams and Andreas. So there's going to be things to think about there. Andreas had a really good week. It does suggest that the Trippier Andreas rotation is definitely still on the cards for those sorts of managers who have Trippier. He rotates really well in that sense with Andreas. And I feel like Andreas is definitely going to be one of the top bench options that we're going to look towards. And I feel like Nico Williams, I was a little bit hard done by by Demari Gray getting a goal through an assist of Pickford. But Nottingham Forest still overall aren't a defense that I would really like to back. Dean Henderson is only interesting, in my opinion, because of the way he operates like Mesley two years ago, where he's getting a lot of save points. And Nottingham Forest are actually allowing the opponents to create a lot of chances. And that's pretty much why I would like to keep, hopefully, Haaland for Nottingham Forest if he's able to play in that game. But... I think the main concern there is that he might be rotated out for that one. And Julian Alvarez could be an interesting punt if some managers would like to do that. Uh, but we need more news on that before we even think about that. As far as Salah, a great week once again when it comes down to the points in a week where people were so low scoring. And definitely, I would say options like Perisic and options like Rodrigo weren't even considered as captaincy options. So in reality, when it comes down to assets like Jesus, Haaland, KDB, 
Salah still outscored everyone just by a little bit, but enough to actually help me provide a little bit of a rank boost to what was a terrible week. So that's how things stand. Ramsdale is also an interesting option. Saliba opened himself up as a much cheaper alternative. That's something we talked about recently. But not only that, Robert Sanchez has been a very interesting option at Bright Brighton. And I feel like he's the most consistent 4.5 keeper right now because whilst Henderson is about to be subject to a price rise, mostly due to his West Ham game, I just can't really see Nottingham Forest keeping that many clean sheets. Whereas I do think that's very much on the cards for Brighton, who have a decent amount of fixtures in the future. If we move on to the tinkering. So going into game week four, I actually have two free transfers. And I feel like the opportunities are either move into a 5-3-2, as I suggested last week, based on the information I have with game week three, or to move into a 4-4-2 structure that incorporates Rodrigo, who in my opinion is probably the most interesting asset that I'd like to get into shortly. If we go out of Diaz, we have the option of moving into Perisic, but Perisic is someone who's close to a price rise, and I don't want to actually go into Perisic early. I don't think there's a need to do that. Yes, I have only 1.0 in the bank, and, I, and, and that's the only opportunity I have to move Nico Williams to a 5.0 before the Perisic price rise, but I think it's most important to actually get Perisic after the news that he'll probably start, or at least when I get a little bit more confirmation from Spurs journalists and people in the know, such as Paul O'Keefe, to actually ascertain whether he starts and gets the minute. So I don't really care if he gets to 5.5. That means I'm forced to move into a 4.5 or 4.6 defender. That's probably just going to be dunk for now, unfortunately. That's as things stand, so that's transfer option number one. Transfer option number two is to move away from Reed and to consolidate on the 4-4-2. That would be moving into Rodrigo and then downgrading Diaz into someone like Dunk. This would leave me with 0.1 in the bank because of Rodrigo's price rise. This is a, a, another transfer option. I could also move into a Brentford centre-back. That's another opportunity. But I do like actually Brighton and, and, and Leeds games independently, even though they do meet each other in game week four. So even though it seems like I'm hedging my transfers in game week four, because Dunk is going to be matched up with Rodrigo, and they're probably going to score points against each other and actually cause each other to blank for whatever reason, I do like their independent fixtures. Uh, as we go on for FPL. So it, it does seem like the perfect time to make that transfer if I wanted to do that. And I prefer Dunk independently compared to the Brentford centre-backs that are on offer for now. So that's an option. The last one I would actually really suggest is for my own team is to keep Diaz and actually to move into Saliba and then to actually go into Sanchez. This feels like a little bit more of a protective move, but it does feel quite strong because I would actually suggest that Saliba is quite underpriced for the game. And Sanchez simply is the most interesting 4.5 for me. I know Dean Henderson is close to a price rise, but for me, Sanchez still has the much better fixtures. And th their defense on paper just seems much more, I think, open to keeping clean sheets than Dean Henderson. I feel like it, he, it does re require these kind of masterclass games that he, he might continue to pull out because he's so good at making these saves, just like Mezde was two years ago, that he could match Sanchez. But I, but I still really think Sanchez is the better option for now. So this is a transfer variation, but it does feel very, very safe. And that's going to be transfer option number three. Transfer option number four is probably going to be something like Trippier Perisic. But as I said, doesn't seem like it's open to me at this moment. And I don't really like going for Cucurella either, as opposed to Perisic. If I was to move away from Diaz, I can't really see it being a second Chelsea defender. And that's just simply how things stand. Going into the future though, Haaland's definitely going to be someone I have to think about and Luis Diaz as well. Especially if, let's say, Liverpool fail to perform versus Bournemouth, or even if we get some early news that Haaland's going to miss the Nottingham Forest game. And that's as things stand for my team. But I think game week four transfers will be around Rodrigo and Perisic. And we'll see how things go on based on any kind of last minute injury news or if we get information of someone like Ryan Sessegnon starting in place of Parasitch game before.